next week is going to be our last class for the term and then you all are basically doing your independent studying how many of you all are coming to the well not coming but signed up for the may classes the extra classes in me bala the raise of hand means yes yeah okay wonderful glad to see some of our own students coming and this is open so you all can tell your friends in other schools as well they are welcome to join that it is not strictly the cts students now it's very easy to get idle especially how exams have been postponed not saying that you all should just have a book all day every day obviously not but there need to be some sort of um, revision going on because it is very easy to forget concepts that you learned well what you have been learning for the past year it's very easy to kind of slip and forget certain things so what i have planned today <clears throat> you all seen notes on the human i am going to go through these concise notes then correct the homework now the homework was basically two gce papers which i sent on whatsapp as well as the um january 2019 paper how many of you all completed the homework raise your you could actually raise your hand how many people completed the homework the two paper ones and the um january 20 2019 how many of you all partially completed raise your hand yeah some hands went up all right how many people didn't do it nobody going to raise their hand now by the way i had an idea what how we will end our last hsb class I know a lot of you all have joined TikTok. Do everyone in the chat right now have a TikTok account? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. About five people. All right. It don't. It don't have to be TikTok. Whatever video app you have, or you could just use your video. I would like you all to do something creative. you know showing your thoughts and your feelings about the whole hsb subject you all could um do a song you all could do some kind of expression you all know it have like the expressive clips i want you all to send me those all right you all, you all could send it during the course of the week or even next week no particular deadline obviously i want it for tuesday next week So I could showcase some of your, you know, creative videos on TikTok or even some not TikTok. It could be an other a different app. Um, or you could use your video. Now, if you don't want to show yourself, you could do a audio. Now, basically, what I want the video to be about, you're basically expressing your thoughts, how you felt about HSB, your, you know, the whole. your your thoughts on the subject itself or any um what you like about the subject what were your favorite topics anything that you would like to share so i can showcase it in the um online um class i will share this share video and it will it will also be recorded as well so when you all finish school and graduate you all can always look back and remember the memories All right. Now normally when we have the last class we have we would have had like a little pizza party but unfortunately we can't do that. Last term, last um not last term, last class we did that. But um due to the circumstances we won't be able to. Also those who won the prizes as soon as like I said now they said the third year was the April the third year is the last day. for the um you know these these business places to be closed 
So when we get um, some information as to when we can open, I will definitely let you all know, Emily, Tristan, Kashida, Raphael, um, Sophia, Saravana, and Daniela, when to come and collect your prizes, all right? Don't worry, that, that was not forgotten. Okay, so enough talking and blabbering. Um, any questions so far? All right, so let's start with, I'm gonna teach the eye over. I'm also going to go through the nervous, um, the nitrogen cycle. So I'm teaching certain topics in a concise manner, just to make sure you all have not forgotten. Bala is TikTok famous. Well, I can't wait to see. <laughs> all right. Okay. Now you all have to learn two sense organs, the human eye and the human skin. And we already did the human skin previously. The human eye contains something called a receptor cell. The word recept means to receive. So the two receptor cells are the rods and cones. Rods are responsible for black and white images, images, whereas cones are responsible for colored images. Now the fovea is a part of the eye at the back on the retina, which only contains cone cells. All right. Now you all have to learn like about 15 parts of the eye. Now I just pinpoint the parts where light is passed through. Now light is passed through transparent layers in the eye to eventually land on the retina because on the retina itself, that is where you have the receptor cells. And that is what's going to generate the image. Good so far, right? So how light is transmitted from an object to the brain? Light passes, now light travels in a straight line it will pass through the conjunctiva, the first layer, the cornea. Now, cornea and lens, I highlight them in red because they are involved with bending the light. The cornea has a curved surface, so it slightly bends on the cornea. The pupil is the opening of the eye. That is where light will have to pass through to enter the eye itself. The lens now, you all have a, a, what you call a biconvex shaped lens. That is going to further refract or bend the light rays to land on the retina. When it lands on the retina, these two cells are going to become stimulated by the, the light stimulus. And that is what's going to generate a nervous impulse, which is going to be sent to the brain by this special nerve called optic nerve. The other parts of the eye, like the aqueous humor, that is kind of lubricate the eye, keep it moist, protect it. Same thing for vitreous humor, support the shape of the eyeball. Don't forget the two humors, aqueous humor and vitreous humor. Then you have some muscles. You have, for instance, the ciliary muscle, as well as the suspensory ligament. Now these two, does work together when it comes to changing the shape of the lens. When you change in the shape of the lens now, that is what you call accommodation. So accommodation is the changing shape of lens to view near and distant objects. Now when you are viewing something that is near or close, your lenses actually become fatter because it has to bend that light how does the lens become the lens become fatter? The ciliary muscle is going to contract, and that is going to cause the suspensory ligament to slacken. Now it's opposite now when it comes to distant objects, because instead the lenses become this supposed to be thinner. So instead of fatter for distant objects, it becomes thinner. How does this happen? The ciliary muscle will relax opposites, causing the suspensory ligament to tighten. All right. Now, accommodation can be confused with pupil reflex. Pupil reflex deals with 
the size of the pupil. Now this is change shape under dim light and bright light. For instance, in dim light, like if you shine a torch light directly into your eye, you will notice the hole or the pupil becomes Sorry, the, yeah, but dim light. So if you if it didn't have enough light in our room, the pupil is going to get larger or what you call dilated. How does that happen? Is because the now you have two different muscles. I'm going to highlight it: circular here and radial. Now don't confuse pupil reflex muscles with the muscles from accommodation. Accommodation is ciliary suspensory, right? So say that about 10 times in your head before you, before you all mix it up. Um, also, look at it. For dim light, it's going to relax circular muscles, that is, causing the radial muscle to contract. And as a result, the pupil becomes dilated. And it's the opposite here. Any questions with this um, pupil reflex and accommodation? Because this could come in multiple choice. Eh? They could ask what will happen in dim light, what muscle will relax, what muscle will contract. Now, pupil becomes constricted in bright light because you don't want too much light entering the eye. It could actually um, damage the, the nerves or damage the rods and cones. So that's why you're not supposed to look at the sun or look at bright light for long hours. Let me see if you all have any questions. All right, no questions so far. Um, if you all have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Now, you all, we looked at um, different types of eye diseases or eye defects. So for instance, short sight is a result of the lens maybe too thick, eyeball is too long. How to correct it? Use a concave shape lens. I hope you all remember what concave looks like. Basically, it's um it's a thinner one. And convex is the rounder one. So convex shape lens is used for long sight where the lens, um, how does someone acquire this type of eye defect? It could be genetics, meaning that their lens is just too thin or the eyeball is too short. Glaucoma and cataract tend to happen in older individuals. So it's a, what you call a degenerative disease. The body weakens and degenerates over time. Glaucoma is when you have a pressure buildup in front of the lens, and that is because the aqueous humor is not draining out. So it's building up as a result. So to correct this, you'll have to drain out the fluid, which is you're undergoing surgery, or you wear corrective lens. Cataract now, a cloudy fluid is covered the opening or the pupil. So light is can't pass through. Hence you can't see clearly, you see very blurry. So to correct cataract, surgery or corrective lens. Then we have astigmatism. Some people just have astigmatism with short sight and all kind of madness. But basically this one is when the cornea and lens has an irregular shape. It's not, it's not a smooth curve. It's basically a rough kind of surface. And how to correct this? Laser surgery. And afterwards you have to wear either contact lens or glasses prescribed lens and apart from this so this is the eye topic and apart from that well obviously you will have to look at the actual um diagram and be able to label it know what each structure does all 15 of them so any questions with the human eye we did this a few times in class all right, so moving on, let's correct one of the assignments now. Um, I'm going to send you all all the concise notes.
So let's correct the GCE. And I have all the answers, by the way, I will send you all for the booklet that you all um, purchase from school, the CSEC past papers. I'm going to send you all this um, answer sheet. Where do I have it? Here it is. So let me just show you all how it looks. So you all don't get confused. Now, those who purchase the book, it will be in this particular order. Those who are looking at the paper once on the Google Drive or downloaded it, you would realize it's not in this order. So you have to look carefully for the years. So these will be the answer that I will send you all. Please do the questions first and then check the answers and correct yourself. All right. During the month of May, we will be looking at the recent ones, which will be 2015, 2010. These years are the back here. And there's no kind of pattern with multiple choice. There's no kind of pattern. There's no kind of, um, you know, way to learn these things off. You just have to remember the questions, remember your theory, and be able to use the process of elimination. All right, so this will be sent. So you all have to do 20, 2005 and which year? What year all you want to correct with? It was May, June 2005 or May, June 2006. Let's do, we could do 2006. Or 2005? Okay, let's do 2005 then. So here are my answers. Let's go through the questions. And let me know if this is the same paper because I know GC have um, October, November, and um, how many of you all did this as homework? All right. Okay, so getting some replies. Okay, so let's go through it. Number one, when fuel burns in the engine of a car, energy is released. Which process that occurs in living organisms is most similar to this? So when you're burning, so you come like you're breaking down food to produce energy. And that definition fits respiration, D. All right, D, number one. Number two, the diagram shows the features of four organisms. Which organism is a parasite that only reproduces inside living host cells? So it cannot be a fly because that can live in, in your body. It cannot be non-cellular. It has to be something that is living. It cannot be, now this structure here is a fungus, but the key thing, the key to this question is they said it is reproduce or make copies inside of your cell, in, inside of your body. So that would have been a unicellular. So this is a, a microorganism here. Next one, three. I would like someone to read number three. I need some, I need you all to participate. Keep the class going. What's wrong with this? I'm going to say flatworm. Flatworm, right. So is this long name here? Is to soma, which is an, a scientific name for saying flatworm. This one is a blood fluke. This one is a different kind of microorganism. And this one is a mosquito. So, see? 
number four, someone else. Could we go? Let me see. You all can see chat. All right. Um, Adon, I read question four. Okay. Alice, read question four. I realize some people just sign on for signing on, Zig. Okay, then, Bala, read question four. The diagram shows a cell from an onion and a cell from the liver. Which guideline does not point to the same structure on both diagrams? All right, so A, that is cytoplasm. That's correct. B, that is nucleus. That's correct. C, that is chromosome. That's correct. D, this one is cell membrane because it's a liver cell which is from an animal. And D on this side is the cell wall. So the answer is D. Question five. Come on, someone, whoever on me the mic. The diagram talk. shows, sorry. The diagram shows part of the nitrogen cycle, which processes are X and Y. All right, so the answer here is B because nitrogen in animals, nitrogen in plants. Animals is feed on plants. So ingest means to feed. Nitrogen in air, nitrogen in plants. So how does that um, transfer? By a bacteria called nitrogen fixing bacteria. Converts nitrogen gas to nitrate. I'm going to teach you about this cycle today too. Number six. The parts were shown can be used to compare the energy values of various food substances. Which food substance will give the greatest rise in the temperature of water, of the water? All right, so you're looking for a food group that has a lot of energy. If it have a lot of energy, it's going to require plenty temperature, um, a rise in temperature for it to burn. So number six is, D, sugar has the most energy. Who could tell me what structure is this? What's the name of this? If you all could um, identify it. It's the ileum. I did not tell you that. It's found in the wall of the ilium, but it's not the ilium. Anybody else? This is the finger like projections that I was talking about. The villi. Very good, um, Dominique. Villi or villus. Good. What is needed for the movement of calcium ions as shown by the arrow? Number seven is B, iron helps with um, absorption. This process would have been absorption by diffusion. And the answer is B. Number eight. We need readers. We need readers because we want the multiple choice to stick. Why is iron an important part of diet? The answer is C. To, iron is used to make hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the red pigment in your red blood cells. Number nine. You're seeing the answers are decided. The diagram shows a vertical section through a molar tooth in a jaw, which is the hardest part shown. All right. So what is A call? That's the hardest part. I 
Um, like I said, this whole structure that is visible is the crown. If you tell me A is the crown, you are incorrect. We are looking at the internal section, not the top section. So A, which I taught you all, is the enamel. B is the dentine. C is the pulp cavity. D is the cement. Or you could even say root. Moving on. Number 10. Where does the bar enter the alignment? Elementary, elementary, elementary can canal. All right. So the answer there is B. Duodenum. Who makes bile? Which organ makes bile and stores bile? Bile. Uh, uh, I barely heard that. Was that is the gallbladder? The gallbladder stores it and the liver makes it, produces it, yeah. Number 11, go ahead, Kashida. Number 11, what are the conditions necessary for health defecation? Defecation, defecation. sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Defecate means to, well, we ain't gonna use the obscenities, but it means to number two in the toilet. Anyways, go on. The answer here, all right, so 11 is D. You need the contraction of the gut muscle so it will, the stool will move. You need fiber or roughage, which helps stool to also move through the intestines. You don't need vitamin C for this, but you need water to soften the stool. Right. 12. This is a nice diagram. The diagram shows a section through the heart and its associated blood vessels. What is the pulmonary vein? Which pulmonary is the pulmonary vein? So that's C. Blood enters the left side through the pulmonary vein. That is the only oxygenated vein or vein that carries oxygenated blood. It fills the left atrium here. Then it flows into the left ventricle. Notice the valve here is shut, but the valve will open. Then it will close when it's filling the ventricle. The wall of the ventricle is thicker. Look at how thick it is compared to this side. Because when this wall contracts, it's, it's, it's going to squeeze the muscles and that will force blood up into the aorta, which is A. Because aorta has a, a very important job. The aorta is what's going to basically supply the rest of the body with oxygenated blood. All right, 13. What is the role of the pacemaker in the art? So the answer there would have been C, it regulates the rate of contraction of the heart muscles. The pacemaker is also called the sinoatrial node, the SA node. So that is what is basically sending nervous impulse throughout the heart muscle so that it can contract and relax. Don't forget these four things, atrial diastole, atrial systole, ventricular diastole, ventricular systole. You see this topic? I will definitely want to do this, the circulatory system, uh, you know, one more time during the May, during that um, May classes, because it's a very long topic. 12 is, right, 13 is C. Right, 14 now. Oh. Which guidelines label lymphocytes, phagocytes, and red cells? The answer here is D. Lymphocyte is one. This is what you call the, right, so it have a wrong nucleus. We could clearly see that. Two is phagocyte because it have this lobe-shaped nucleus. Three is the red blood cell because you see that the, the center is sunken in. That's the biconcave, this shape. Fifteen.
Come on. A pie chart shows the percentages of three gases in inspired air. So which gas does sec sector X represent? Now all of this with the dots is nitrogen. That's 78%. X would have been oxygen because oxygen occupies about 21% of the air. Carbon dioxide. Anybody know how much percent of carbon dioxide exists in the air? 5%. 5%? That's actually plenty. It's 0.03%. It's at 35. No. I don't know where you get that figure from. So much? 78 for nitrogen. 21 for oxygen. 0 0.03 for carbon dioxide. And the rest will be for water vapor and noble gases. All right, moving on. Six. What happens when you breathe out? C. Diaphragm will relax, meaning it's going to curve. It's going to move into that kind of dome shape. Volume is going to decrease because the air is leaving the lung. Pressure will increase because it's empty. Nineteen. The diagram shows the epithelium lining a bronchiole from a cigarette smoker and a non-smoker. What is the name of these cells? You see in... Now, we did respiration over last week. But what do, you, what do you call this? We know this is the epithelial lining. But what is this structure that is here? This kind of... These lines. What is that called? It's called cilia, right? Cilia is the hair like structure. Now, somebody who's smoking, the hair like structure has become damaged by the smoke. So, you're going to have less cilia. So, the answer 17 is A. There are fewer cilia, so this person would have been a smoker here. Alright? Also, there's more mucus in a smoker. However, we can't determine which one. Although, why, why X have more mucus, Y have less mucus. So, therefore, it cannot be Y. But I'm not seeing any with uh, more mucus. Alright. 18. Which part of bone makes it tough but not rigid? C. Collagen fibers. Calcium phosphate is make it um, hard or rigid. Somebody else, 19. The diagram shows a replaced it joint. All right, that's just the opening of the question here. What is missing from this joint that would hold bones together in a normal joint? So if this is, the, now this is the hip joint, this is a ball and socket joint. So what it is missing here will be ligament. You need something holding the bone to the bone. It can't be loose like this, otherwise it's easy for this to break. So 19 is B, ligament. 20. Somebody wants to read a question, Nathan, I haven't heard from you. You know, online classes could be a little less interactive because people don't want to talk, you know. But the thing is, I see that you all have a mic. 
the fact that you all have a mic, you could talk. So all you have to do is unmute your mic and talk. Because if it was in class, I would have all you up and you would have had to talk. Okay, if nobody reading, well, I just go and just leave the screen like that. Number the 10. Seats, um, cooking oil up to 100 degrees Celsius. And large dust classes and go her right hand. A small drop of oil splashes onto her left hand. With results, an explanation occurred. Thank you, Sandri. So here, the answer would have been B, the larger, the, um, more oil, obviously, a larger mass of it, it will have more heat. So therefore, your skin will be burned more badly on this side. 21. We have where there. So let me see how long are it taken. The diagram shows a section through the skin as seen with a microscope. Which structure dilates and enlarge, enlarges to cause heat loss from the body? So the answer here would have been A, which is the blood vessels or the blood capillary. So it dilates or get wide, so more heat is lost. We did the skin already as well for revision. 22. The diagram shows the position of some glands. Which gland produces both hormones and digestive juices? That is the pancreas here. A, that is basically showing the mammary gland, which is not part of it. C is the adrenal gland. D is the ovary. All right, this is all. Now when we do multiple choice, we're revising topics because in questions I could explain certain structures, I could explain what it does. All right, 23. The diagram shows a simple reflex arc. What is the correct order of events? All right, so first, if it touch the pin, you, you get a prick in your finger. So that is going to cause pain. So that is the stimulus, which is going to be received by your receptor cells, which is going to generate a nervous impulse and carry it to the sensory neuron. From there, it's going to go to the spinal cord, which the relay neuron is going to relay the message from the sensory to the motor, giving out the response. The motor neuron will is going to send that message to the effector, which is the muscle, which is going to contract, and the hand is going to move away from the pin. So 23 is A-T-N-O-M. Moving on, 24. The reaction time of a student is formed by measuring the distance a ruler falls before it is caught by a student. A teacher drops the ruler as shown. Which part is taken by nerve impulses from the student's eyes to the muscle of the hand of his hand? Sorry. Okay. So here what I've been see. So the retina is where the image is formed. It sends a message to the optic nerve, which is send a message to the brain. Now, this is a kind of fast kind of reaction as well, because the teacher drop a ruler, the student catch it one time. So the spinal cord is going to give off the response via spinal nerve, which will be found in the hand itself, which will cause the muscle to contract so that the hand can move and catch the, the ruler. So this is this is the pathway here. You just have to know how it flows. Twenty-five. A patient suffers from high solutionations, convulsions, convulsions, and sweating. There are secretions from his eyes and nose, and spots appear on his skin. From what is the patient most li likely to be suffering? Heroin withdrawal. 
So when you stop taking drugs, especially for someone who is addicted, you're going to have withdrawal symptoms. So you're going to hallucinate, you're going to sweat, you're going to have convulsions. All right, so 25 is C. Twenty-six. The diagram shows parts of the male reproductive system. What will be the effect of removing GLAN-X? What is GLAN-X? Anyone? That the vast difference? Well, they're not pointing a tube. They're pointing a, a gland. So the males have two glands. E? Who? Remember, the males have two glands. This one here, and then these two structures that sticks out of the tube. So this here is what you call a prostate gland. Only forget all your body. This here is the seminal vesicle. So once you know what these things are, you will know what is the effect of it. So 26 is B. If you remove this, you're not going to get that semen, that fluid, that um, liquid that is um, forming this, the semen liquid. All right. 27. The table describes two organs in the female reproductive system. What are organs X and Y? All right, so X here. Oh, the female, okay. So X is the tube which carries the egg from the ovary. 27 is B, that is the fallopian tube or the oviduct. Y, the organ in which sperm, sperms are deposited. Well, this is the ejaculation which takes place in the vagina. 30. Hear me too, yes. I jump like I saw when I finished this. 28. What happens to the amniotic membrane, umbilical cord, and uterus wall in the early stages of childbirth? The answer here is B. The amniotic, which is the amniotic membrane, is the water bag that will break. Then the um, now the umbilical cord is be attached to to the fetus and the mother. So that is why the doctors will have to go and make an incision and cut it. The uterus wall is obviously going to contract, forcing the baby out of the uterus through the cervix, through the vagina, which is basically childbirth. 29. What cannot be prevented by healthy living? All right, so 29 is C. Sickle cell anemia is what you call a genetic disease or inherited disease. Sophia, yes, you could read the next. Hear what? Sophia, you read the next set of questions, right? So after, so we'll give Kashida voice a little rest. 30 to 40, Sophia will read. So you cannot... Change your lifestyle habits and think that you could cure this because this is a genetic disease. It's in your genes. Can't get rid of that. All right, Sophia, go ahead. What is the most effective method of preventing the spread of typhoid? The answer is C, preventing flies from reaching food. Typhoid, cholera, gastro, all of those tend to spread from microorganisms, from feces, urine, um, garbage, that you, 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 contaminate, you contaminate with your um, water supplies or you have touched, or flies touch it and, and then land on your food. That's, um, this is what you call a pathogenic or infectious disease. 31. 
The map shows a small town in which block of houses would an outbreak of cholera be most likely to occur. So you're basically following the arrows and you're looking at what it have in this community and they label it. So for instance, stagnant pond, right? Stagnant means the water is still. Um, we have sewage works uh, operating here. Then water flowing down. You have wells, you have a pit latrine here. So you look at the key and you basically identify which will have the... Um... Now cholera is caused by contamination of sewage in your water system. So if you have sewage here and you have pit latrine here, which house you think we're not get the outbreak? The answer here would have been 31D. Or it could be B as well. I'm looking at this. Let me see the water flow in here, direction of flow. Okay. So because we have like um, running water, the water will cause the contamination to flow downwards, leading to this community at the bottom of the street. So D. 32. The table shows the number of cases of six diseases among long-serving prisoners in four prisons. Which prison was most likely to have been overcrowded and poor ventilated causing diseases? So if you have a poor ventilated room, you have a high chance of contracting a respiratory disease. Obviously, AIDS and coronary, AIDS is a sexually transmitted, so it can be this. It cannot be coronary because that's a um, physiological disease or lifestyle disease. Cannot be lung cancer, cannot be these two. So we're looking at tuberculosis, which is a bacteria that infects the lungs. Where, for instance, you inhale or you touch a liquid droplet. Same thing like coronavirus. Same kind of effects. So 32 is A because it have the high number of tuberculosis cases. 33. How will a doctor identify syphistomias? This is good. <laughs> Bellasia. All right, so Bellasia is basically, uh, at, we haven't really, we don't have to really learn this one. Hence the, you know, the GC is a little different. This is, so for this one, is you are counting the number so 33 is d examine the feces for eggs like i said this don't really fall in your syllabus so let's skip that one 34 what is the difference between an antiseptic and a disinfectant all right so 34 c antiseptic does inhibit bacteria reproduction now you use antiseptic on your skin on living tissue. Disinfectant you don't use in human tissue. You use this in um, floors, counter surface. All right. And you don't use disinfectant in pit latrines because I, I had a long explanation of why you should not disinfect the pit latrine. That could cause a, um, that could cause something worse to happen. 35. Among the people in a town, a disease is caused by a virus and transmitted by sexual contact only. What will reduce the spread of this disease? C. Increase use of condoms during sexual contacts. Because condoms is the only contraceptive that could prevent the spread of a STD. Thirty-six. Fluid from the vagina taken from a patient suffering from gonorrhea is spread over an eager plate. After 48 hours incubation, six, well, six wells are made in the eager and a different antibiotic spread in each well. The diagram shows the plate after a, 
after a further 24 hours. Which two antibiotics will be best used to treat a patient suffering from gonorrhea? Right, so when you look at this plate and you look at the letters, now the ones that have a lot of these dots mean that it had a, um, look at it, colonies of bacteria. So that means it had a lot of bacteria growing. So that means this antibiotic not killing the ba bacteria. Neither is T, because you're seeing the number of colonies here. Yeah. But R and N is clear. It have an empty space around here. So that means the antibiotic will kind of kill off the bacteria, prevent it from growing. So the six is B, N, and R. 37. The graph shows the antibody concentration in the blood flowing to the vaccinations against a disease. When does this person become immune to the disease? So you have vaccine one, vaccine two. This is the first shot. When you get your first vaccine, your antibodies is going to increase. When you get your second booster, it's going to increase more because it already recognized the disease. So it's going to make more copies. However, this, is, this line here means that this is the amount of antibodies you will require to fight off the disease. So therefore the answer here would have been B, because when you draw a line going downwards from this point, that is basically five and a half weeks. Almost to the end. What is the main risk to human health in warm weather when waste is left lying around in the streets? All right, so today it would have been B, house flies feed and reproduce if you have waste lying around. And that could cause a spread of pathogenic diseases because house flies are what you call vectors. They carry disease causing agents. 39. The diagram shows four sources of water in the environment, which shows the order from surface to least safe water to drink. All right. So this one you have to look at. Okay, 39 is B. So two, then one, then three, then four. Now, this is the worst to drink because, because it has that incline or that kind of hill, there tend to be a lot of surface runoff. Surface, like when rain falls, it will have surface runoff. And those water from surface runoff tend to have a lot of pollutants in it, like sewage, fertilizer, acid rain, which is not the safest to drink. But those that is beneath in a well is less likely to have that surface runoff. So these tend to catch water directly from the rain. And because of the flat surface, it will be better to drink from because they don't have any pollutants running off and contaminating your water supply. All right, last one, 40. Fertilizers and pesticides uh, in the run of water passing into a lake from surrounding farmland. What are the likely effects on the animals, plants, and mineral salts in the lake? Okay, so it would have been C, animals. Now, when you have plenty um, fertilizers and pesticides entering the lake, fertilizers is going to cause what you call eutrophication, where you have a lot of plants growing on the surface of the water and that will block off the sunlight. So therefore that, that will cause animals to not receive oxygen. Plants is going to increase because it causes too much plants on the top to grow and mineral soils is going to decrease. So we corrected the first homework assignment. I will send these answers again to you in case you missed something. Correct yourselves and message and 
share in the chat. I will not obviously announce your marks. I just want to see how much, what grade you all are at. So feel free to send a message and tell me how much you get out of 40 for this paper. Then we will go on a short break and I'm going to correct the paper too. January 2019. So get your hand on that paper and we'll correct it together as a class. All right, so now is almost two o'clock. Let's take a 15 minute break. Any questions before I um, put a pause? All right, very good. Those who send me the results. You all are in a good part with your multiple choice, but we need to work on paper twos as well. Eh? So I'm bringing up on the screen the past paper we are going to correct. Jan 2019. So get your answers ready. Next 15 minutes, we'll correct it. We're going to correct the January 2019 paper. This is the most recent. And in case some of you all don't know, I say this again, you all have a paper too still. And I don't know if you all heard, they actually said they may, well, so far Trinidad have um, no new cases. Everything seems to be, so far, seems to be kind of stable. And what might happen is they might keep it for July because they did say they wanted, they wanted to kind of push it back again. But you all just keep on your lookout because you, if you get to relax and they're going to change it back, I don't know what to say. So then you'll fall into a little trap there. So let's keep at it. All right. Let's go through. Y'all can hear and see my screen? All right. Figure one shows the image of an upper limb. The image shows a skeletal muscle label A, which forms one pair of antagonistic muscles. So antagonistic muscles are muscles which work in opposites. So A is the bicep. Next one, name the muscle that is antagonistic. That would be tricep. And the tricep would have been right here behind. Contraction and relaxation of the skeletal muscles in figure one are necessary for locomotion. Explain how these muscles work together to cause movement. All right, so basically, the, these muscles work in pairs. Notice I, I write, now I write simple sentences, and these simple sentences is flow from one point to the next. So the, in, that, in that method where I'm constructing my answer, I'm actually causing no point to be missed out. So first I start of these muscles work in pairs. The bicep contracts, causing a pull on the... Now look at the bone that the bicep is con connected to. That's the radius. The bicep contracts, causing a pull on the radius. Full stop, right? That's a simple sentence. We ain't going on blah, 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 and write all kind of points in one, try to fit it in, in one sentence, and it's not making sense. Third sentence. This causes the tricep muscle. What's the opposite of contract? Relax. And they're looking at spelling errors to it. This causes the tricep muscles to relax which will allow 
the ulna to move upwards. As a result, the forearm or the forelimb bends at the elbow. Now, I know you all don't write to this kind of um, depth, but you need to be able to write as much. Always two marks. Now, you could have easily said up to the sentence here. However, you need to it, how to get the, your answers flowing like this and to include as much detail as you're writing simple sentences. You start with the basics and then you keep flowing, getting more deeper and more specific into the topic. But you, you're maintaining your answer. You're not, going on, you're not going to answer something else. You're answering what the question only asks. Don't waste, it. Don't waste time answering something what the question never asks. Okay. Two reasons why locomotion is important to humans. One, allow humans to escape danger. Two, to seek food. And the list goes on. Locomotion is movement from one point to the next. Movement is when you have a part of the body moving, but it's stationary. C. I want someone to read part C. Let me hear from Dominique. Miss Patsy, right? Yeah. Um, malaria and dengue are two diseases that are prevalent throughout the Caribbean. Table 1 and Table 2 show the incidence of, disease, of diseases in two Caribbean islands, X and Y, during the period 1990 to 1994. All right. So, here we have two tables. Now, this one, you had a plot of bar graph. Now, I saw on the website that they had a bar graph, which was very, very difficult to maneuver. So hoping this year they don't bring anything for you all to plot, as you have to do it online, it might be difficult. But basically, a bar graph, you just, um, you're going to put years on the y-axis, which is below here. And then you put their countries now. You put on the x, sorry, on the y-axis, you put number of cases of malaria on the x-axis they put the year and then you just draw your bars and you make sure you space it out all right next one which island had the greater number of cases of diseases during period 1990 to 1994 so let's look at this table carefully what you all had Island X. All right. Um, X is which one? Which one is X? Oh, this one is X. So this one has 160 plus 125 plus 80 plus 50. This one has 117 plus 70 plus 45. So yes, X is the answer. Which island had a greater number of cases? Island X. Suggest three reasons that could account for the pattern shown in the number of dengue cases in Caribbean Island X. So why did Caribbean Island X have more dengue than the other? What could be some reasons why a country have so much cases of dengue fever? So you could say that the grass and bushy areas are not being maintained because mosquitoes like high grass, they like a lot of bushy areas where they could go on um, 
lay their eggs. I like that graph, um, Sophia. That's very nice. One thing I noticed that it choked them up. So you just put spaces between the ears. So this is one reason. Now notice this question is tree marks. So you put the grasses and bushy areas are not being maintained. Therefore, it causes plenty breeding ground for mosquitoes. What is another reason? A lot of people confuse this question, by the way. The question says three reasons that could account for the pattern shown in the number of dengue cases in X. Now, when you look at the figures in X, you realize it had plenty dengue in 1990, 1991, and then it started to decrease. So this could actually you could actually say that people was unaware of methods in which you get rid of the breeding grounds so people were uneducated or not aware of methods of controlling the spread of mosquitoes I would like someone to give me a third answer. People in Island X is not using mosquito nets and repellents to prevent the bite of mosquitoes. The health minister is taking measure of spraying the area with substances to kill the mosquitoes. Okay, I like the second one. Um, you could say the health authorities Hold on, eh? Number three. So sometimes when you switch from program to the next, it, it can um, have a little lag. Right, so to the point, government agencies are not implementing measures such as community sprays. You all know it have those trucks that are supposed to pass every year to bomb up the, not bomb as in B-O-M-B, -B, but B-O-O-M, right? They're supposed to fog the area, release that kind of gas to kill the mosquitoes. So the government agencies in that island is not implementing measures such as community bombing, Well, let me just say community sprays and checkups. Checkup meaning this supposed to have people going from household to household and making sure that the area around the house don't have empty containers lying about, they don't have old tires. It all was at a high bush. So they inspect in the area. All right, lap, part four. Say two similarities between malaria and dengue. It is spread by mosquitoes and it is both infectious disease. Yeah. Okay, very good. Both spread by mosquitoes. And also both are uh, infectious diseases. Very good. So you all got that. Number two, define the term excretion. Well, in the amount of time I, I say a definition for this. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste from the body. Right. Figure two shows the diagram of the structures of the excretory system. I actually brought this in one of your tests. The structure that carries blood away from the kidney. You all said A. All right. 
One is, so we're looking for the renal vein. Let me just write his answer here. All right, hold on. Saying, the structure that carries blood away from the kidney, we're looking for the renal artery. So that would have been the, uh, the yes, A. The structure that houses Bowman's capsule, we're looking for the um, Bowman's capsule tend to be in the cortex region, and the cortex is the cortex is C. Structure that went through which the urine leaves the body, we're looking for the urethra, that's E. The structure that stores the urine, that's the bladder, which is D. Right, so we got those. Most of you all got that, right? C, revise 50 pounds, overweight. Her doctor tells her that she has developed diabetes. Predict three effects Reba may experience if she leaves her diabetes unmanaged. So what could happen? If you're suffering from diabetes. Weight loss. But this person overweight, eh? So not everybody might experience weight loss. Poor circulation of blood. Right, so frequent, frequently feeling thirsty, poor circulation of blood. Can also say that the person may become weak, so she may feel weak and fatigue. All right, so that's three. State three recommendations which Reba doctor may suggest to help her manage her diabetes. So definitely exercise. You have to reduce sugar from the diet. Reduce sugar in the diet. And also take um, her insulin shots, okay? Take in Insulin shots and it have in top in the tablet forms. That's a long time thing with using the injection. Okay, Reba's husband Mike is a high powered lawyer who is also overweight and smokes for relaxation. So just one disease that Mike could be at risk for developing and give two symptoms of the disease. You all said lung cancer, okay, because he's smoking. Now he also overweight. So you can say, uh huh. Go on. We said an auto pronounce the word properly, but it, it starts with A. I think it's atherosclerosis. Sclerosis. Yeah, atherosclerosis because he overweight. All right, so if you want to talk about. So if you're thinking about, if you're talking about lung cancer, the symptoms would have been shortness of breath, feeling weak and tired. If you're talking along the lines of arterial, oh shucks, oops. Arterial, it could be two arterial sclerosis because he overweight, that means he's eating unhealthy diet. And he's smoking, so it could also be this form of it could be ART as well because this is the hardening of the um, artery walls. So the next part of the question is what? Two symptoms, high blood pressure and chest pains. 
All right. Number three, the nervous system together with the endocrine system regulates all of the activities of the human body. It consists of two major divisions, the CNS and the PNS. Name the two main components of the central nervous system. Brain and? Spinal cord. Spinal cord, thank you. Name the main component of the PNS. It's basically called the spinal nerves. All nerves are connected to the um, spinal cord, the branching nerves. You could call it, that's what you call the spinal nerves. Next one, we have the brain. Match each of the following with the function. Cerebrum is for conscious thought, memory, and learning. So C, yes. You all. Those who responded, thank you for participating. Cerebellum, that's D, yeah. Pituitary gland secretes hormones, yeah. What are two hormones found in the pituitary gland? What are two hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland? That's the master gland in the brain. All right, all you need to go through all the endocrine notes. You could have said ADH. You could have said growth hormone. You could have said FSH. You could even say LH, all of those. During HSB class, a teacher explained the difference between voluntary and involuntary. Name one voluntary action. So, putting on what? A light switch. Putting on a light switch, right? That's you choose to do that. How this action occurs? First, a thought is generated in the cerebrum of the brain. Full stop. A nervous impulse is generated and then transmitted to the spinal cord. The response is brought about by the effector which is the bicep and tricep muscle in the fore limb. Obviously if you if you're turning on a light switch you're using your hand, your fore limb. You're not going to use your feet. So the bicep will contract. So the response is brought about by the effector, which is the bicep and the tricep muscle in the forelimb. All right. So that is how the action occurs. Identify two drugs which act as a stimulant and one drug which acts as a depressant. Stimulants. Okay, two drugs. You all said caffeine and cocaine. Very good. Depressant, alcohol. Very good. Make sure you, you know the effects. The friendship between physical drug dependence. Yes, marijuana could be... Actually, marijuana fall under the... Hal hallucinogens category. All right. It has more hallucinating effects. Um, differentiate between physical drug dependence and psychological drug dependence. All right. So physical
drug dependence is when person needs the drug for medical purposes. Like for instance, they injure their leg, they're taking painkillers. Right? That's physical. So because of the pain, they're dependent on it. So let me put an example. Pain killers. Now physiological, um, psychological drug dependence is when person needs the drug for their own for the mind for for their own mental well-being so they needed to calm themselves they needed to feel high you know so that is so psychological these are the brain depending that the mind needs it like physical means like some part of the body needs it for a medical reasoning also what when you someone is addicted to when someone has a physical drug dependence when they stop taking the drug, they will not experience unpleasant withdrawal symptoms, where somebody who hooked on the drug psychologically, they will have a lot of withdrawal symptoms if they were to stop taking the drug. All right, next one. As a matter of fact, we reach four, we just have four, five, and six. We have three more questions, so I'll pause the question part. I'm going to teach over the nitrogen cycle. All right, so let's go to nitrogen cycle. You all see in this? Nitrogen cycle. Hold on. Eh? Okay, this one is bigger and more legible. So this is a cycle that confuses a lot of you all. Now the nitrogen cycle is, con is basically controlled by three types of bacteria. But firstly, let's talk about what is nitrogen. Nitrogen is a very important element which makes your DNA, RNA and protein. So that is the element used for building the body. And protein is what basically is like one of the main uh, materials in the body. A lot of things are made by proteins in the body. All organisms, plants, animals need nitrogen to grow and to survive. Now in the air itself, in the atmosphere that is, you have about 78% of nitrogen gas. The symbol N2 means nitrogen as a gas. Now nitrogen could be in a different form, such as a solid. So let's see how this gas is going to change into a solid. Now we kind of, when we breathe it in, we not use the nitrogen. Plants cannot breathe in nitrogen as well. So in order for us to use the nitrogen, it had to be converted into a different form, such as ammonia and nitrate. Those are just the chemical symbols in brackets. 
when it is in this form, then our body can actually take it. Well, plants. Now, the first process is called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is turning nitrogen gas into ammonia or ammonium. This is done by a bacteria called nitrogen fixing bacteria. This bacteria does live in the nodules, which is the swellings in your plant roots. Now, the plant that has this type of bacteria are only the legume type of plants. So that would have been like peas, beans, those type of plants have this kind of swelling in the root, which is called nodules. So this is the only bacteria that can take nitrogen gas and turn it into ammonium or ammonia. Also, when lightning strike or when there's forest fires or lava from volcanoes, it can also cause this conversion to occur naturally. Humans as well can change the gas into this form by burning fossil fuels, by using synthetic nitrogen fertilizers and cultivating those leguminous plants because that is what's in, that is what contains the nitrogen fixing bacteria. So this is our next cycle again. Now this in blue is showing nitrogen fixation alone here. So nitrogen in the atmosphere, let me put this in a bigger view. So this is nitrogen gas in the air. And notice you have one, two, three arrows going down. So lightning could strike volcano lava, lava the um, lava that erupts can react with the nitrogen gas and fall as rain which basically causes ammonia to form right i'll say that lightning lava as well as nitrogen fixing bacteria converts it from a gas into ammonia and ammonia is a aqueous or a type of solid which is found in soil. Also ammonia could be formed when plants and animals decompose. So you see any dead plants and animals decomposes this, which is bacteria and fungi just break down the, the bodies of these remains and convert it into ammonia. Urine of, of animals, urine also contains ammonia as well. So when you have ammonia in the soil now, let's see what happens. So you call it ammonification when you convert nitrogen to ammonium. So dead plants and animals decompose and the bacteria will break it down taking the ammonium from the remains and recycling it back into the soil. Nitrification is another process where we're going to have ammonium, sorry, ammonia or ammonium being converted into nitrite or nitrate. Nitrite and nitrate is basically kind of similar. But this involves a different kind of bacteria called nitrifying bacteria. So this bacteria is going to convert ammonia or ammonium into nitrite and nitrate. See any picture here? We have ammonium in the soil. Plants just take it in. We have nitrite. Plants is also absorb that. Plants can absorb nitrate. So plants can absorb these three things, which is help for healthy growth. Eh? So urine and the remains of plants and animals uh, allows the soil to become enriched with these um, substances. 
which promotes healthy growth. Now nitrogen is taken by the plant because plant uses the nitrogen in the form of ammonia to make protein. Plants, like I, like I showed, also take in nitrite and nitrate as well. So these three things they can absorb through their roots. Now this is the first bacteria I mentioned, nitrogen fixing bacteria. It converts nitrogen gas to nitrate. Or you could even say it converts nitrogen gas into ammonia and ammonium. That's also correct. Nitrifying bacteria is convert ammonia to nitrate or nitrite into nitrate. So the process is right here. When fish urinate, when plants die, um, bacteria in the soil is going to convert the ammonia into nitrates. And nitrates can be absorbed by plants as well. And fish feed on plants. So when they urinate, they are going to release ammonia back again. Everything is a cycle. The last part of the cycle is denitrification. So this is when you're taking nitrate and you're converting it back into a gas. So you have nitrate in the soil. However, another bacteria called denitrifying bacteria is going to remove, basically remove the nitrogen from the soil by converting it back into a gas, which is bad for a plant. You don't want to have denitrifying back too much denitrifying bacteria. It's, it should be balanced. So this is just a summary of the three processes. Nitrogen fixation, nitrification, denitrification. And this is just what it converted into. And you have to know the names of the bacteria. Denitrifying bacteria lives in the soil, converts nitrate into nitrogen gas. Like I said, they could deplete soil fertility because you want nitrate in the soil because it promotes healthy growth of the plant. This is a cycle that was in the note. So you will see all the terms that I mentioned. Follow the arrows, see what being converted into what. Now, the impact of fertilizers was basically eutrophication. And I explained all of those things already, right? So um, this is additional concise notes that I will also send at the end of the class. All right, so let's go on another break. It's almost three o'clock. When we return, however, we're going to finish off this past paper. And we still have the um the other GCE paper one to correct as well. Do you all have any questions so far? Everybody know what we do it? All right, so three fifteen we will return. Go and get a snack or something. Let's continue with question four and finish off this paper. Conrad and his sister April, I actually remember this question. A fraternal twin. State the genotype that determines the gender of Conrad. Conrad is a boy, so therefore it'll be XY. Right? Capital. Eh? April is a girl, XX. The male chromosome will be the Y. Female chromosome is the X. Right, very good. Figure three shows a karyotype. Karyotype is just a map showing your chromosomes of an individual with a genetic disorder that occurs in chromosome 21. Name the disorder that this individual may have, Down syndrome, So normally it's supposed to be pairs, a pairs two. This one have an extra chromosome here. One, two, three. Right? So instead of 20, 
22, 23, 24. Now, so it was with 24, so it was with 23 pairs. State which parent passes the chromosome to determine this, the, to determine the sex is the father. Well, the answer in them thing pass. State whether or not this disease can be inherited. Yes, it could be inherited. Um, yes, it's just a genetic disease, so yeah. Define the term degenerative disease. Okay, degenerative disease is when a person <coughs> becomes weak, weakened and their body systems began, begin to stop functioning properly. This occurs in old age. I should say this type of disease. So you always read back your answers. Since you could type it, you don't need to scratch on your paper and have any kind of ugly marks on your paper. So you can always type it over or put the cursor and place any word that you missed out. All right, hemophilia and sickle cell anemia are both genetic disorders. There are two similarities and two differences. So similarities, besides it being a ge genetic disorder, both of them, you can say both involve a defect with the, blo with the blood. I hope you all remember sickle cell anemia. All right, so yes, Sophia, there's an error in the specific gene of a chromosome, right? You can say that as well. Um, also, um, both are fatal. Um, if it's not treated, it can be fatal or life threatening if not controlled. You can't cure it, obviously, because it's genetic. Stay two differences. All right, so sickle cell anemia, you can actually say what it is, is when the red blood cell is abnormally shaped. Hemophilia is when the blood cannot clot properly. So there's one difference there. Yeah? Let's basically say what you know the difference is about the disease itself. What else? Give me a difference. Hemophilia is not sexual. Hemophilia is genetic. Both are genetic. You can maybe see a sign and symptom. So, um, sickle. Let's get right. Sickle cell anemia causes person to feel weak, and you can say hemophilia causes person to bleed profusely when injured or when wounded. So if they get any open cuts, it will bleed out because it cannot form a clot. Right. Question five. Let me hear from somebody. Let's hear from Charles. I haven't heard from her. So, on me, Chema, I can read question five, please. J. 
Charles, huh? So we just know who. It's so easy to know who on, who listening, who taking part, who just have their phone running. And all those who are active, I will, I will personally send your multiple choice answers to you. Those who just there and just there for being ups, um, present, I'm not sending you all no answers and no multiple choice. That makes no sense. The hard working ones will get the, the um, answers. I should I should play the um Jeopardy. You all know the Jeopardy soundtrack? Song, yeah. Yeah, be, because nobody wants to read, so I'll just play that until somebody read. Never get Jeopardy until somebody um start to read. Anybody who's going to read question five? Question 5A. Due to the worldwide prevalence of diseases, health and health-related issues have become a major concern. Personal hygiene is extremely important to one's overall good health, and when neglected, certain infections can develop. Define the term good health. Thank you very much. Before we... um. The static screens for nothing. All right, so good health refers to the physical, mental, and social well being of an individual. All right, now let me write that down. Good health refers to a balanced social, physical, and mental well-being of an individual. Good health includes healthy lifestyle practices such as exercise, balance, diet, and you can even say like yoga practices or something to help with your went um with your mental well being would be like talking to someone, expressing yourself, ex expressing your feelings to trusted individuals so all of this will promote you know a healthy lifestyle next question two infections that could develop as a result of improper personal hygiene ring room. yes ring room for sure food poisoning food poisoning yeah if you're not um Washing your hands when you're cooking, yeah. So food poisoning is also gastro. Very good. You could even say um like skin rashes and stuff. Alright. You can say ginger vitis, that's with the mouth. If you're not flossing and, and brushing your teeth. Leads to gingivitis. B. Many pathogens are floodborne and therefore it is extremely important to ensure that food is, a, is as free as possible from pathogens. Describe two name methods by which pathogens may be removed from food. So you could say cook food thoroughly. So all those people who like to eat sushi and stuff. Trust me, it is filled with microorganisms. You've got to be strong. Some people just get sick with that. 
So you apply high heat and cook the food for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the food. Depending on food type so that pathogens will be destroyed. So you cook the food, you can microwave it as well. Yeah, once you're applying high heat via the stove or, or microwave, that will basically kill all the microorganisms in the food or the pathogens. What is another way? When I, when, how can you remove pathogens from food besides high heat? Miss, can't you boil it? Boil? Yeah, boiling it, boiling water. Well, that come like applying high heat. So that is the same point. We want two separate points. What about washing out the food? When you get vegetables and things, you can't just, you don't know what was in it when it was yeah. in the um the market or while it was growing. So all right, so wash vegetables and meat properly. For example, for meats in particular. You use lime or lemon or vinegar. So you use acidic kind of um <laughs> you use an acidic type of material or substance. Why am I saying that type in now? Okay, for example, use lemon or vinegar. Some people have used flour for meat to remove micro, well, pathogens and clean the meat. Vegetables, yeah, they put a lot of running water, wipe out the um, surface of the leaf if it's lettuce. If it's some um, sieve you purchase, you wash out the dirt and everything from it. All right, so those are two. See, antibiotics can be used to treat some infections, but, they, but their use has been abused. One issue that has arisen as a result of the abuse of antibiotics is drug sensitivity. Identify and explain one other issue relating to the overuse of antibiotics, which could make them ineffective. So drug sensitivity is when you're taking antibiotics when you don't need to take it, and that could cause your body to basically get accustomed to the effects. So in that way, when you are actually in contact with a bacteria and you take the antibiotics, it will not work. That is drug sensitivity. Now that's different than bacterial resist resistance. So this is another issue that is related to the overuse of antibiotics. It's called bacteria, bacterial resistance. And what that is, is basically overuse of antibiotics causes some form or, or some strain of a bacteria to mutate and overcome the effects 
of the drug. When this strong strain of the bacteria multiplies, then the antibiotics will no longer work and person will remain ill. This is because the bacteria has gotten resistant to the effects of the antibiotics, right? So explain this thoroughly. So let me read an answer. Bacterial resistance, when individuals abuse antibiotics, some bacteria may mutate and become hard to destroy by some antibiotics, yeah? Somebody said they love sushi. <laughs> I like sushi too. I can handle sushi, but some people just get sick. Because sushi is raw food, eh? raw meat. Obviously, you had to go buy a restaurant that clean in the first place. You don't buy sushi in the roadside. Number six. Sushi from Super Farm. Yeah, so far, I've never heard anybody get sick from it because it's well kept, it's refrigerated. But I don't like how it does taste. Can I like soggy? I saw some grocery was selling um, sushi from Samurai. But I don't think you all will know the grocery. It's one in my area. Anyways, number six. A. On a field trip, David visited a municipal sewage treatment plant. List four stages in the sewage treatment process he would have observed very good. I've seen someone. So sewage treatment, screening, grit removal, sedimentation, aeration treatment. So you're using the aerobic bacteria to break down the sewage. And then we have F, um, disinfection as well. Right, so those are the processes. Oh, I'll put more than four. One, two, three, four. All right, we, we don't have to put disinfection. Because not all the time, you only disinfect the water if it is, um, you know what? Screening and grit removal is almost the same. So I'm going to put back this infection. Right. So now we're good. Name two unsafe methods of sewage disposal used in the home. Now sewage is not just feces and urine, eh? Sewage could be like the water you use to wash wares, bed. So dumping um, waste in drains. Your, your waste is not supposed to be flowing into the drains. Having and it's not supposed to have leaks like cracked sewer pipes. Neither, right? Very good. So dumping waste and drains or leaking from broken sewer pipes or tanks. There's one. What else? Actually, this is two. Dumping waste and drains and allowing waste 
to be lit from broker sewer pipes and tanks. Right, we got two there. B. Benjamin has a pit latrine that is filled with fecal matter due to the slow decomposition. He is thinking of using the contents of the latrine to fertilize his garden. Advise Benjamin as to whether this is a good idea. State three reasons to, to support your response. So is this a good idea? Well, you have to say yes. If you read this question, I, I actually, sometimes when you read over something about 10 times, it's going to make more sense. They say, advise Benjamin as to whether this is a good idea. So, from my interpretation, is basically you have to, now this could go both ways. Eh? It could be bad and it could be good. So, I'm, I'm seeing that the fecal matter has slow decomposition and taking long for the bacteria to break it down, which is a bad thing to fertilize this garden. I would say no. How many of you will say yes? Because it could go both ways, but you need to know how to back up this kind of answer. So it could be both answers, but your explanation for it is what really will get you the points or the marks. No, it's unsafe. All right, so reason why it will be unsafe, because it will have a strong unpleasant smell. When rain falls, flood may occur and spread the harmful pathogens in the soil and groundwater. It can also attract vectors such as housefly to the garden, and they too are responsible for the transmission. Very good. That was well laid out. That was a very nice answer. So I will put that same thing. All right, so no, it will cause a foul odor which can attract pests in the neighborhood like rats and stuff also when rain fall it can cause the fecal matter to run off and enter water bodies, which could harm marine or aquatic organisms. And lastly, it can cause pathogens to build up, which can be transmitted by vectors and spread diseases to individuals living nearby. All right, so that's a good answer there. Right. Two, suggest two actions Benjamin should take when his pit latrine is filled with fecal matter.
Yes, I had to sneeze there. I didn't want to um, make a loud noise. Two, don't worry, it's not Corona. Um, two, so you cover the pit latrine with soil and also what you will have to do is contact local sewage authorities to clean the clean and empty the pit latrine. Some people will do that. Almost at the end. C. Who wants to read part C? Thank you. Thank you. You all heard Sandra? No. I don't have a good microphone. I think it's because you have a fan blowing. Okay, Sophia, you read. Charlotte walks through her sweet potato patch and notices that one vine has larger leaves than the other vines. She later discovered that the vine with larger leaves produces very large sweet potatoes. I named the event that could have caused the difference in the size of the leaves and the sweet potatoes. All right. So obviously, if the um, potato has larger leaves, that means it's receiving a lot of sunlight and therefore it's making its own food. So what that, what that spells out? Photosynthesis. State two reasons why the event name in C is beneficial. It produces oxygen for an animals to breed and it produces food for animals to consume. Simple paper. Yeah? And that was the end of this paper, January 2019. Anybody have June 2019? That would be good practice. Or did I give you all that one? I'm not sure. I have to check in my archive. Okay, so we finished this paper. Next thing is the multiple choice. And I want people to read it. Okay, you are seeing the multiple choice alongside the answers. So question one to 40, I want students, maybe we could split it up. Who wants to read 10, who wants to read the first 10, something like that. Who is school number one? Hi, good day. What is your name? You know, sometimes we just have people popping in and popping out. They don't know who it is, you know. It could be some spy. 
All right, who wants to read the first 10? So start with question one. Four, four types of organisms which cause athlete's foot. So it's D, which is the fungus. Two, which process makes and which process removes a product of metabolism? D, you're making, so product of metabolism, you make carbon dioxide. Removes, you remove um, urea. Emily, we do it in tens. So Sophia is reading the first ten, so maybe you could take the second ten. If that's okay with you. Because if it wasn't for you all, this wouldn't, this wouldn't even be our class. So that's why only those who are active and who are talking, I will, send, I will personally email you all the answers in multiple choice. The rest of them will just have to beg somehow. Number three. Three. The apparatus in the diagram was set up and allowed to stand. After one hour, the level of the solution has risen to X. What caused the level to rise? Water entered the viscin tube. This is just a, a, a little plastic bag. A soft plastic with holes. Tiny holes. So if this is um, sucrose in here, it has a it is very concentrated, whereas water has is dilute. So water will enter the viscin tube. Four. Oh, what do humans depend upon plants to make? Carbohydrate, oxygen, and protein. Oxygen from photosynthesis. Protein from the nitrogen, carbohydrate from um, pho uh, well, photosynthesis. Five, which nutrient is present in all of the substances, amylase, hemoglobin, and insulin? C, protein. Remember, I say protein makes the most of the body. Six. What is the best food to help a patient recover from wounds which are slow in healing? So eggs. Seven. What does the water present in digestive juices hydrolyze? Protein and starch. Eight. The bar chart showed a percentage of fat, protein, starch, and sugar in four foods. Which food is eggs? All right. Um, it is what? So eggs have a lot of protein and fat. So B? Nine? What applies to all the process, digestion, respiration, and protein sim synthesis? A, all biochemical reactions that require enzymes. Then, the diagram shows an experiment to investigate the action of an enzyme on starch after two hours, sample were taken and tested. What has happened in the tube after the two hours? Number 10 is B, starch has been hydrolyzed to maltose. So you have starch, basically test you, test one, you add solution, stays wrong. That means it um, stays wrong means that it didn't have any um, starch in it. Test you, add Benedict reagent and heat, turns red. That means it have a reducing sugar. Now, starch is made up of glucose, so it would have been hydrolyzed to maltose to cause this um, color change here. All right, next 10 is by Emily. Are you ready? Yeah, miss. Right, loud and clear. Very good. 
The table gives numbers for named substrates, enzymes, and products. Which number shows a complete digestive process? B. So B, let's see. To start, look, now this table is confusing to read off. Huh? You have to read them together. So one, two, three, four. So you're matching the numbers. So starch is broken down by amylase into sugar, which is glucose. So you're looking for two, six, and nine. That's B. Which conditions are needed for a blood clot to form when you cut yourself? You need calcium, damaged platelets, fibrinogen. You don't need white blood, white blood cells to form a clot. So B. Wait, wait, the diagram shows the blood supply of the liver. Which blood vessel would have the highest concentration of glucose after 24 hours without food? 13. D, because, let me see what's D. All right, so A is an artery. B is a vein. Now you have your ileum here, which is your small intestine. This structure C is what you call the hepatic portal vein. This carries the food to the liver. So the one after 24 hours without food, remember it's from the liver, your food will go into different parts of the body. So after 24 hours, it would have been digested. So here would have had the least amount, um, highest concentration because this is where it will then be delivered to other parts of the body from the liver. 14. The diagram represents a simplified arrangement of the main blood vessels supplying various organs. Which path shown by the numbers of the blood vessels passed would, ha would a red blood cell take when traveling from the kidney to the head? Well, this one was difficult for many. <clears throat> so this one would have been D. So let's see D. So from kidney to the head. So you're looking at the kidney. So from the kidney, now remember, from the organ will be on the right hand side. So it'll be five to six, and then it goes to seven to two to one, because when it reaches back to the heart, the deoxygenated blood will flow to the lung, and then, get, then it will get oxygenated again, and then flow back to the left hand side. This one, you had to really understand the makeup of your arteries and veins. Arteries are on this side. One, two. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. This is the only vein that is oxygenated. So you'll see pulmonary vein on the left side. Everything on the right side is the veins, which is deoxygenated. All right. 15. The diagram shows a section through the thorax showing the structures used when breathing. Which two structures contract when breathing in? So see, what is this two and four? Two is the external intercostal muscle. Four is the diaphragm. All right. The breathing of a person was measured at rest. Breathing in and out as deeply as possible once and then at rest again. The diagram shows the changes of the volume of air in the lungs. What is the vital capacity of this person? So the vital capacity is the largest breath one can take. So number 16 is D. That is the largest amount. 5.0. Which cell is likely to contain the largest number of mitochondria? Muscle cells. The diagram shows a model of a muscle and bones at a joint. The elastic band attached at J and M represents a muscle. When the elastic band shortens, what is the distance moved and the speed of movement at both M and at H? This was also a difficult one. So this one would have been C, movement at M. Look at the distance from here to here. Small and slow. Movement at H, 
is a larger distance, so large and fast. Which type of fibers are found in ligaments and tendons? See, elastin is allow the ligament to stretch. Tendons, however, don't stretch. So therefore, it, it contains collagen instead. The diagram shows a section through the skin. What happens during vigorous exercise? Okay, so this was a repeat in the um, exam that I gave. The vessel that four, which is the capillaries, is going to dilate because you are trying to cool down the body. So as a result, heat will be lost. All right. Now I'm looking at the time and we are out of time again. Now those who have been participating, right through, I remember you all. That would have been like Bala, Emily, um, Kashida, Sophia, who else? Some people just talk and then they disappear, but the ones who disappear will not be included. Um, only you all, I'm going to send in multiple choice answers to. So those names that I call out, WhatsApp me your email address. So I will send you the answers. So you all will always have that to track and answer you. Um, have as a guy when you study it. Those who not answering will not get anything. Because it don't make sense, it is the long way and you're just doing nothing. And Bala, you will read for the next class, all right? Now, don't forget to send me your TikTok videos. Or if you're not using TikTok, you could use a different app. Message me, send me it, so I can save it to my computer and play it for the last class. Basically, you're going to tell me your thoughts and opinions of HSB. How much you enjoyed it, if you did not enjoy it. Just like something expressive kind of video so i can show it and uh, well you all know that the videos are on youtube okay. homework wise i'm going to send yes no miss i was agreeing i said okay yes i i can't wait to see yours miss why oh, yeah, you have a, a huge following anyways for the homework now I will email, I'm sending it on WhatsApp. It's going to be a next pass paper two and two GC multiple choice papers. All right, any questions? Okay then, so have a good afternoon. Be safe and be wise.